Hello and welcome to Please Don't Send Me in Outer Space, the podcast intent on exploring all that science fiction and fantasy has to offer one movie at a time. My name is Joel. My name is Sarah. My name is Campo. My name's Aaron. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. And shout out to David DeRoy, who does our usual theme song. He's he's badass, and he's going to guest with us soon when he comes to town. I haven't decided that yet. I may make him wait outside while we podcast. <laughs> Maybe we'll make you wait outside, Joel. <laughs> I knew there was going to be a coup someday. Especially whimpering outside the window. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Holding a stick with a ball on top of it. I'm recording too. <laughs> <laughs> the movie this week was Cutie Honey live action from 2004. Directed by... Hariaki Ano, starring Eriko Sato as Honey Kisaragi, or Cutie Honey, Mikako Ichi, Ichikawa as Natsuko Aki, and, uh, ooh, I'm, I did not write down this guy's name right, Jun Marikami as Saije Hayami. Saije? Is that how you say it? You know what I'm talking about? Saije? S E I J I. CJ? CJ? Yeah, he's the reporter CG? guy. CG? CG? CG. CGI. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> but there was a lot of CGI. <laughs> CGI and animation, and, uh, you know, I really liked all that. For some reason, the uh, low quality or low fineness of, like, not trying to make everything look super realistic or anything like that, I think that really went in favor of the movie. I think someone had money and they're like, okay, let's try and keep it as authentic to comic book and animation as possible by, to a T, trying to capture everything that happens in an anime or in a manga. <laughs> very cartoony, very slapstick. For those who don't really know Kitty, honey, she's, um, I think in the, is it early 60s? I'm not very good at... Telling exactly the time period of which the that I looked it up, but I don't remember. Yeah, go ahead and keep talking. It looks like early sixties to me, but sometimes with anime, just it, look up it's, uh, it feels Ricky. like maybe it's a little bit older than it actually is. Sometimes, yeah. As far as the fashion that they wear in it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it is an anime that's definitely very iconic. I don't remember the artist's name, but uh, he was also a creator of Devil Man. And he wanted to make a manga that really pushed the limits on how much, I guess, um, sexual things he could put into a manga with it not being, let's say, X-rated. <laughs> so, Cutie Honey is a girl that has the power of having her clothes rip off of her body and reform in any <laughs> way she sees fit. And with whatever costume she... Uh, repurposes her clothes into she has the ability or knowledge and whatnot to use. Let's see, there's a lot of backstory, but I I mean, there is spoilers. I don't want to ruin it for anyone that would like to pick up the manga or would like to get the 60s show or the 90s show or the 2000s <laughs> show. This is a long-running like show. There's a lot of gaps in between. Like I don't know exactly how many episodes are in the 60s. So they're actually really hard for me to find. Um, I remember the first one I saw was the 90s, 
uh, cutie honey, like new cutie honey, which has a lot of boobs in it. I'd have to say the most boobalicious one out of all of them would have to be the 90s one. So You're just as a warning, yeah, just a warning. These are just scary, scary frightening anime boobs so if you can't handle that maybe you should try the 60s or maybe 2001 i remember the first time one of my friends told me about cutie honey it was in the 90s and we were playing a video game that she was in oh. and one of my guy friends was like that's cutie honey and i was like oh cool and he goes do you know who she is and i'm like no and he goes, she's uh, she's a superhero, and her clothes come off like mm-hmm. when she's like being all powerful. I'm like seriously, and he's like, yeah. And he felt like he was like telling me this like down low secret, like, <laughs> shady thing. Like, don't tell anyone. Yeah. But there's don't this superhero anyone. whose clothes come off. It's kind of in the same uh, genre as Magical Girl anime, where you know they have the transformation and whatnot. In it. Sailor Moon and style and yeah. stuff like that, Sailor right? Moon, Yeah, there's tons of mm-hmm. that are like that. That are like that, but I think this one's definitely a very um like cult I guess cult classic the big I don't know, one I could think of. It's the most memorable because mm. like I said, the artist really tried to push the limits of what he could put. So a lot of the villains are very like bondage themed. There's a lot of nudity. Not sexual though, for some reason. It's sexy, I guess you'd say sexy without too much uh like when her clothes tear off it's not like hentai it's more like they tear off just so that she could get to the next outfit yeah sometimes her clothes do rip off but they always regenerate back into something else it's not like yeah the villain is trying to do something sexual to her her costume doesn't stay in one place it actually gets damaged right yeah it gets sure but i mean she could just (laughs) repurpose it whenever but uh she cannot if her uh, power is low, so she has to eat a great deal to keep this up. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes sense, I guess, in the way of if something, if you have a power, I mean, you have to keep replenishing. <laughs> whatever, that, yeah, yeah. Whatever fuels that power. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm, delicious rice foods. So what happens in this movie? Give me a synopsis here for the, for the audience, if you could. Um, okay, so it, it's... I like to say there's a stable story to this, but they're really... <laughs> it's kind of it? a crazy one, yeah. It's kind of a... It's like someone just went, let's make a kid anime. Let's make it exactly like what it would look like if we had the money to animate. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> we don't have that money. So um, basically, it's Cutie Honey. The opening is just her taking a bath because you got to you know keep everyone in their seats for that opening sequence so that way they don't leave <laughs> when they find out that... My monocle it's, fell off. <laughs> it's really low budget. Um, it's basically her uncle gets kidnapped by... I don't know if I should give away or how to even explain this it's without... It's bad guys, yeah. Mm. Like, well, I don't this, really know how to... There's no way to say it without spoiling it for anyone, so I'm sorry. You spoil uh, a little bit. That's I'll okay. spoil it. It's not really well, about the plot so much as how this is being filmed, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's all how it's... Um, her uncle gets captured by kind of Queen Barrel-esque kind of tree spirit that sucks the essence out of billions and billions and billions of girls <laughs> in this weird <laughs> cult. And she has, of course, all these henchmen that have different themes, of course, and they try and get cutie honey. The interesting weird part, which I don't know why they added, they added um, a uh, officer in there somehow to make her be friends with cutie honey or something. They keep pushing that she needs a friend. A lot in it, which is not usually like her manga or her anime, where she's usually. Oh well, no, she didn't work alone. She. Yeah, had, I thought, I, thought yeah. I saw pictures of someone that looked just like, like an anime version of the cop lady. Yeah, that was in the uh, two thousand version. So okay. it was. It probably came after the movie was made. Now I don't know. I'm not completely educated because it's kind of hard to sometimes get information on this movie. And uh, some of the episodes. But, um, I don't know, they keep trying to push in this movie being friendship with this girl. And I guess she's got to learn how to be... It's about the power of love. Yeah, it's about the power of love, but not... And friendship. And Mm. humanity, I guess. Yeah, humanity. That sort of thing. But, uh, it's that's basic story, but you have a lot of great 
horrible designed villains you have. <laughs> just, I don't even know how to explain the only guy, <laughs> like, Kenshin in this, like, really big, like, mini boss who just has his face checkerboarded, kind of, and just sings before he, I guess, fights. I guess he's tries to keep balance between dark and light by trying to be beautiful and also evil at the same time. Mm -hmm. That really means a lot to him, but that doesn't really make any damn sense. Um, is um, her trying to get her uncle figuring out how to let go of the memory of, I guess, not really let go, but more embrace the memory of her father and not obsess over the passing of her father is a big thing. It's a very simple story, but the most important part is how this movie is filmed. It has extreme close-ups, kind of fisheye lens at some points. <laughs> it has a lot of yeah. uh, sped-up scenes to show someone's running really fast. There is definitely a lot of green screen going on in this, but the cool thing is they managed to figure out how to keep the essence of like that anime feel to it, even though it's a live action. In a very, like, sometimes it feels a little odd, but sometimes it's very natural. Sometimes the body language that they have, trying to, struggling to act out some of these scripts that are obviously, probably should be animated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's, some, yeah. <laughs> it's like, things that they're acting out. I, my favorite is, like, the reactions. It's, like, <laughs> cutaway reaction, like, just like an anime. Yeah. And it worked so well and so funny. There's speed lines. There's, there's a great scene of where a hole gets blasted through buildings and Kitty Honey just yells for, like, a good, what, 30 <laughs> minutes just looking at it <laughs> while it's happening. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> Like, in surprise, not angry, just like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of really cool angles, actually, in this movie, too, the way they choose to put the camera for certain scenes. Like, there's one where a reporter opens up his laptop, but for some reason they chose to put him, like, uh, using a glass table and having an upshot through him through the glass table while he's going through his computer, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of an interesting... Yeah, they angle. chose a lot of weird angles. I I remember thinking like that they were super up close in like one of the fights, yeah. and it almost felt like I guess yeah, like anime or like other. You're not used to seeing just two people's faces when they're yeah. fighting in a movie. Yeah. You're used to seeing what's going on, like not just like their facial expressions, like back and forth or whatever. But I I thought it was cool. I mean, what did you think, Joel? Which one are you talking about? The elevator scene? Yeah. <laughs> mm, that was pretty cool. The pretty, that was, like, freaky. What did you think that about scene. the movie? Oh, I liked it, but I did feel like it... The way it starts off is kind of really high-octane, like yeah. you're going straight into a battle, and there's kind of a, a Power Rangers-esque bad oh, guy, yeah. except for actually intimidating, not just some kind <laughs> yeah. of costume. Like somebody with big claws and all these things, and like that—that that is a really cool action scene. And it, you know, it mellows down as it, as it should. And we see, you know, what she's doing outside of her regular life, and it—it's it, funny at that point. But at, I'd say after the elevator attack, it kind of hits a lull because there's a lot of explaining that needs to be done for story reasons. And we, you know, we lose some action stuff. We cut back and forth between the what Cutie Honey and her friends are doing and what is going on with the <laughs> the big baddie who is not actually leaving the room ever. <laughs> yeah, that person was stuck. Yeah, yeah. he was rooted. And you can all right. There's no like disguising the fact that they are in like a sound stage. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. no, yeah. It's, it's, no, no. <laughs> just. They asked the crew to just bring whatever they could from their into homes the and room, garage into and the room. <laughs> put it together. But in a way, yes, it's very stylish, though. It's in a fun kind of way. It's not in a uh, look like at that kind of way. It's more like, oh my god, what? Is yeah. This? It felt, it, yes, it was a soundstage, but it definitely felt like some type of evil headquarters chamber. You know, they they, yeah. they, they got the pedestal thing down. 
the <laughs> <laughs> surrounded by the water like, the water like, like, like person with like what? no way to get to the pedestals maybe there's like little floaty boats that they use I don't know <laughs> the water is one inch deep no I'm just kidding I don't know <laughs> I thought there is some great seas like in that lull that you're talking about I think one of my favorites is when cutie honey's too afraid to go home because the bad guys know where she lives and the only person that she knows I guess besides the reporter, doesn't want her in her house, so she just walks the streets, and she just shows her in all these different outfits, just not knowing what to do. Like, she just keeps changing her clothes because she just, I guess she's afraid people recognize her too much, but yeah, she wants to go to her work because it's familiar, but she doesn't want to put anyone in danger, so you just see her walking into work. With a mustache and suit. I, I love that scene so much. <laughs> and she just stares too. at everyone she works with and just cries at him. I have to leave. <laughs> and, that that and was then my favorite scene. Someone says, do I know you? And she's like, no. <laughs> like in the lowest voice she possibly can. And this big anchor, <laughs> news anchor mustache. And then it just cuts to her crying on the swings dressed as a man with a big bushy mustache. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that scene so much. And no one seems to so mind good. this no. at all. Her disguises work. <laughs> Nobody recognizes her. <laughs> it's not... It's, there's no synthetic makeup or anything. It just looks like a woman with <clears> a <throat> fake <throat> mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> her lips. Still has her eyelashes and eyeliner on and lip gloss, but just the mustache. Yeah. She's a very important businessman. Yes. You ignore them. I feel like it was slow in one part, but for me, yeah. it wasn't that part. It was like the fighting, all the bosses. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. See, that was when I was like really into it. I mean, I was for part of it, but it just went on. Mm-hmm. So I think I didn't, I didn't pay attention as much as I would have if it had been. I don't know. Maybe if there'd been fewer bosses, or mm-hmm. I don't know. I I think it was a really entertaining movie, though. Yeah. yeah. And. I was, like, game as soon as I heard we were going to watch this, but it, like, exceeded my expectations. It's definitely, like, a cheesy, funny movie, Mm -hmm. but, like, for a cheesy, funny movie, it's really good. I demand more bosses. Yeah. (laughs) I would say this is, like, a great movie to watch if you have a bunch of friends you want to just chill out out with with. and just laugh and not... If you just want to be stupid with your friends, this is a perfect movie. You don't like have to. You don't game. have to think at yeah. one bit yeah. about put it. it on the background. Kind of a fight. Well, it's one of those things where it's not one of those things where like I'm going to put something dumb and just I could ignore. It's one of those things like I'm going to put this movie on, and it will keep my attention. Mm. Yeah, and be really amusing, even though it's really cheesy. There are actually some effects that are kind of cool in it. I feel like sometimes with films, it's when they're limited that things become really creative and great more than people that actually have a lot of money and time. Totally. Yeah. Like that movie Red we watched. It was super oh. low budget, all kinds of green screen stuff, but they did some like creative yeah. stuff that I hadn't really seen before. Yeah. And they, I mean, they pulled, they pulled off a lot of stuff, right, Aaron? Yeah, I have to agree with you. Yeah. yeah. And th- this has more yeah. of a budget than Red did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you when you said that Campo, the first thing I thought of was Dark Star, which yeah. was a, a film which had a pretty minor budget but oh, pulled yeah. off some pretty awesome stuff. Well, yeah, that so. movie wouldn't be as great if it was so st- if it didn't look like someone's garage. <laughs> I don't yeah. think it would be as great. Yeah, and that was definitely people's garage. <laughs> <laughs> had you seen this before, Aaron? Uh, this is my first time seeing Cutie Honey, the live action movie. What'd you think? I liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, it was really fun. Everything you guys mentioned so far, I'm on par with. I think the only thing I'm even slightly critical about is that the, the new, the reporter dude, for whatever reason, he felt like a cosplayer <laughs> for some reason. Like he didn't. All of them look like no, cosplayers. No, no, that's the thing. Everything else in the store, in the, in the, in the universe, in the universe at hand, everyone else looked like they fit for some reason. But that dude stu- stood out to, for some reason to well, me. That's the whole point. I don't know why. That's what because makes he's it got funny. a secret agenda. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't supposed to. He sticks out. I was picturing like a 70s drawing of like a Japanese reporter guy who was yeah. like in some like crazy hat with like a snazzy like striped <laughs> suit. And I was like, I bet they had to try and like. 
like replicate that look yeah. for like a person now and it just looks like a costume like <laughs> you know they all kind of do but in a wonderful way like I swear I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if I seen like a thousand of those mini bosses like mm. at, and it just has the same quality yeah totally but, um that's good like, I loved I loved the Power Ranger effect of the uh Scarlet Panther Claw lady when her mouth opened to fire the beam. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool effect. Yeah, she had kind of like a um, like a mechanical look to her when she yeah. opened up her mouth really big and then shot this giant beams that could just demolish buildings. But everyone's okay, don't worry. It's not like explosions kill people in this universe. <laughs> no. <laughs> but also, they made a, actually uh, in the beginning there is an obscene amount of explosions when you first like an idea of see Kitty Honey fight, and there's a scene in there where there's just explosion blowing explosion, and you see no one getting phased by this. Like you could get an idea that in their universe this happens all the time. Well, it was, uh, and there's a guy in the background. If you oh, watch, yeah, um, I forgot what exactly the scene is, but it shows uh, the officer. I'm being really upset at how many people are getting like how much explosions are going on. And there's just a guy brushing off his coat mm. in the background, like, oh, explosions, you know, just, oh, my wife's going to kill me if the suit gets dirty kind of reaction <laughs> to it, even though everything's on fire. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah it's a fun, it's, it's a really fun anime, too, if you're not willing to, I mean, if you're a total stick in the mud person that has to have logic to your anime. I don't think you would like Cutie Honey. Mm. It's very whimsical. <laughs> what kind of person who watches anime expects logic? Oh, there's so many. You'd be so surprised. No, they need to freaking, I don't know. I don't know. Take a chill pill. I think another thing I really like about Cutie Honey is the flippin' catchy theme song. <laughs> uh... It's going to be stuck on my head for weeks. Yeah. You know what? But I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because I love it. Every, there's so many, yeah. there's different remixes from each anime and they're all good. Yeah. <laughs> like all I'm, the remixes. I'm probably going to have to download it, put it on my MP3 player so that I can, so that I can just ride this ghost out, you know, this, this, this earworm. Yeah. <laughs> um, totally. When I, was, uh, yeah. when I was in high school, what I used to do to get ready in the morning is I had a really really crappy anime tape that someone gave me for free but one of the trailers or previews was for cutie honey on it so i would play the beginning of the tape just for the commercial because it would play the whole theme song all the way through and i rewind it and play it because you know you couldn't really get mp3 certain right like right i actually mm -hmm. had to buy a cd ow what's going on what are you poking here? me for you stopped that what's going on no <laughs> We're recording a podcast. What's going oh, on? Oh, okay. Here? I'm here. <laughs> hey. But uh Nice to see ya. <laughs> I think far as it holding up over time, it's still really enjoyable. I think the anime still holds up. It's I think it gets to that point when something's so dated it's fabulous type of thing. But uh um, hmm. I don't really see I mean, I don't know about the anime, but I didn't see this movie as being dated. Oh, I'm talking about the anime, like the 60s first the, oh, the one I, the, yeah. I saw that. It's like 25 yeah, episodes from the 70s. Or maybe it's 80s instead of 90s. Mm -hmm. I have a bit of a trouble trying to tell between that and anime. It says here, Cutie yeah. Honey 75, or 73, 74, 25 episodes. Mm-hmm. And then we have the one from 1998, okay, which is probably the nudity, nude, nude, nude one yeah. we were talking about with nudity in it. No. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And then Re, Cutie Honey, video mm -hmm. 2004. So not that far after 98, but it looks completely different. Yeah, they tried to get back to you could tell the more. Well, uh, Campo, was there, an was there or was there not an actual crossover with Devil Man? I don't. I can't picture no? those two okay. combining. Yeah, Double okay. Man as a. Stop, stop mixing up your enemies. Yeah, sorry. I just remember seeing a trailer or something with them, both yeah. of them be existing in the same universe. Now that's a fun one too. Enemies, Double Man. Make them all. What? I don't know. Uh, Cutie Honey Flash, nineteen ninety seven, and then Go Nagai's new Cutie Honey, nineteen ninety eight. 
Cutie Honey live action, re Cutie Honey. It's been a bunch of times, but it seems like there was, yeah, there was a huge space in between the one from the 70s and then back yeah. into the 90s. Oh, I thought it was six, sorry. <laughs> no, oh, no, okay. right? Maybe the manga is from well, the 60s. It, has, yeah. it definitely has a 60s yeah, feel like, to it, Like though. a late 60s feel Maybe to it. Maybe it's the spy thing yeah, or the disguise. Speed Racer, you know? Yeah. The way that their clothes are all... Well, I mean, the only reason I may think of that <laughs> is the go-go boots and mm-hmm. the... So I figured 60s, but... The, the cut on the bottom. Yeah. <sighs> that's that's who you were saying, the, the reporter didn't look like he fit in. He looked like he fit into a speed racer to me. You know, yeah, kind of thing. totally. With the hair and the hat. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen any of that. What? I can't... A uh, speed racer at all? No, not mm-hmm. even as a kid. You didn't watch it on Cartoon Network? No. Uh, the funny thing is, what introduced me really to Kitty Honey was... Uh, my dad, actually, which is really where he used to get a lot of anime on Laserdisc, and uh, that's how I know Kitty Honey. It's really funny because I remember a walk going into a video store, and they had the Laserdisc section, and there's all that anime, and then there's one with the ladies' clothes ripping off, and my dad's saying, let's see what this one is, <laughs> <laughs> it looks interesting. <laughs> well, I guess oh, the uh, studio juggler got somebody that oh, clothes, uh, I gotta get this one. Same thing happened with uh, heavy metal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he said, there's all these Disney movies, and he's like, well, this one looks interesting. Let's check out this one. It's called heavy metal. He- oh heavy gosh. metal is a staple in a certain age, uh, teenage lives there that I just, I did not. <laughs> I think I saw about five minutes of it on HBO, and I was like, I'm not supposed to be looking at this. I need an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was truly forbidden from from any interaction with heavy metal. So Good, you really, I, you I didn't uh, I didn't actually watch it until I was an adult. <gasps> Aaron, you've seen that? I, I saw it when I was a teenager, it. but I I could tell that if I had seen it too young, I would have been scarred for life. By <laughs> it. I think like middle school is when I saw it. Yeah. Or maybe even younger than middle school. My maybe dad didn't have any censor. Yeah. That would be that would be a fun one to revisit. Should probably. Oh, oh you want to put it on the list? Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> he gets a choice coming up. Uh, so. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, well, I think Ooh. he's already got his thing. So uh, <laughs> let's talk about... I want to talk about the difference between the movie and the anime. I mean, is the anime, like, more violent than the movie came with? Um, you know what? No, I think they're pretty same on the violence same. level. But the only difference is, is I think the anime had more interesting... Uh, Ways the villains fought. There's one lady who I remember in the new Cutie Honey, she used to kidnap women, and her thing was to encase them in some sort of it looked like plastic or something, and she thought it was like for art. Mm. Killing beautiful women and, and encasing them in this weird, like liquid plastic Dang. thing, and it says so she could look at them forever. And she had them around this giant grand house. That sounds like, like oh, Hannibal. I was gonna say it sounds like Doppelganger. <laughs> no, it sounds like Hannibal. <laughs> and she had this beautiful, like, crystal, like, kind of crystally castle, and it was just all these women kind of put into the mansion, like it was part of it. Now, her the way she fought it was gems would come off of her and like cut people, like uh-huh. diamonds. And stab people. And she didn't have any clothes on. It was just all jewels was, mm. like, on her body. A lot of bond... There's a lot of bondage stuff in this. There's a lot <laughs> of people being tied up, I remember, in the, sh- in the show. Give the people what they want. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, what do we want? Bondage. When do we want it? Uh, Kitty Honey. Possible. <laughs> there's a lot more, like, um, dynamic costumes Kitty Honey had. Like, I remember someone tried to shoot her. With the machine gun, and instead of, uh, I don't know, I guess what, in the, in this one it seems like they're more outfits you'd see every day, I guess. She's dressed as a, a top or, or, yeah, nothing too crazy, but in the anime, like, she was in a full, like, knight's armor to shield herself, or it would be something, <laughs> like, really more artistically interesting to look at. I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you, what, what your, what, what is your favorite Cutie Honey disguise? If you could um, pick one, even from the the anime or even from the live action, it's hard to say because they're like even her disguises that she's meant to blend in are so just some of them to me they look eighties, but I guess they're nineties. <laughs> but there's one of she's a rock star, mm-hmm. and I just remember her having 
like a bunch of stars and hearts all over her face. Oh, and that's cool. supposed to be hardcore. Cool, cool. <laughs> Very gem, huh? Yeah, no, misfits. not even gem. It's just like oh, misfits. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and I forgot. Like I think she wore like a leather skirt or something. Oh, but cool, that one was cool. like the funniest one where she's supposed to blend in. Oh. I think one where she actually uses it to fight. I think that armor one was pretty cool because it had kind of like a bird beak like oh, helmet. thing that hung over, oh, yeah, cool. to shield from the bullets. Mm-hmm. That's cool. But um, she would brutally kill a lot of the villains though. But I mean, I don't really remember why they even did some of the shit they did. Like, I know the gem lady. She just, I guess that was her art. Other people, I guess they they don't really. They don't, they don't really get in. Yeah, they don't really get into too much of their backgrounds. Yeah, I don't really need one. I mean, yeah, it's I'm, not you know they, uh, unless there's like a big like a uh, <laughs> mainstay villain for the entire season or something like that. That's that's usually when you delve into a character. Yeah. Uh, well. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember to. I'll have to rewatch it because I don't really remember the final outcome of that of the new Cutie Honey or the older one either. Mm. Like I'll have to revisit exactly what the story was on the end. Totally. But um. Yeah, for our Cutie Honey podcast coming soon. <laughs> Which was your favorite costume? Oh man, I think my favorite was definitely the businessman. Oh yes, already the discussed. <laughs> I think that was just, that was fantastic. Moustache. I just, I didn't expect that, you know, and that was really good. I think my favorite was her work uniform, actually. Oh, yeah, the kind of, see, that's what I mean. It kind of has that 60s feel to it. But she had, sometimes when she changed back, she would just be in this white panty set that was cute. (laughs) Just a little, like, white bra and underwear. She would just, and he, like, snaked a photo of her. Was he super into her? Like, he has, so. like, collages of pictures all over the walls of her. Yeah. It's all innocent. But, <laughs> but it seemed like he liked the other girl, too. I think I he's just a weirdo. Like, that's just what it comes down to. Don't question it. He just takes pictures of everyone. Well, I, get, I get the feeling that Cutie, Cutie Honey was, was, was his project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why she was everywhere. But when but when she <laughs> closed yes. the laptop and you Jeez, see those uh, secret photos, those are like you find out his, where, where his true photos. heart lies. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah, totally. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt because he didn't feel ashamed of this. There, he's just like, well, just kind of punching the punching bag. Like, you know, I had to research you, and then when that <laughs> came down, he was like, oh, perfectly <laughs> normal. Reminded me that part reminded me of like an anime where it's like. Like, like a reaction moment where oh. somebody is like, what? Like, walk into a room and it's like, photos, photos, photos. Of every, like, every it has that angle. piercing sound. <laughs> Man, that actress just was amazing. Like, she just <laughs> captured that, that astonishment so flipping well. Like... She I was, was so really good. impressed. I was really <laughs> impressed with her reactions to everything. Like that was great. That was some great stuff. That almost felt straight out of the anime, you know, I know. or, or an, an anime. Like it was it's just very great. anime. Feeling. Yeah, she kept trying to do the uh, hand behind the thing, like uh, you know that they do in like anime and manga. Oh, rub it the back of the it head. It doesn't work in like real life, unfortunately. I do I that like, too. It's like it could. I do like. Yeah, I, don't I think know. it's like a real reaction. But when somebody does it in a manga, you're like, oh yeah, I'm, you know. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know, Joel. You did a really good representation of that yeah, right now. Yeah, just then. Yeah. Just then, yeah. <sighs> Joel son. Oh. <laughs> she did such a good job of, like, there's moments where, like, somebody says something, like, totally weird, and she just has this, like, deadpan, mm-hmm. like, face of, like, and the just kind of, like, curious and innocent, like, mm-hmm. what? It like, she had a very innocent. <laughs> <laughs> like she had a very innocent feel of her. Like I'm just here doing things. Doop, 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 yeah, doop, doop. <laughs> that person's weird, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Everyone's wonderful. <laughs> Police officer's deadpan face is pretty good. Oh my yeah, gosh, she was so good. I was definitely <laughs> impressed with her scowl face. You were talking about her look, and I totally liked it too. Oh, she has a very like, um, what would you call it? It's um, like businesswoman, but like kind of more. She has a fierce. She looks fierce. Yeah. She has like a very simple, clean lines, like mm-hmm. outfit, very simple. Like she wears a black 
I think blazer. It, yeah, a blazer and then a white button up, right? Yeah, is it? she wears a white button up. And, and then the, she wears cat eye kind of. Almost. She has glasses on, yeah. Cat eye glasses. I, I'm guessing kind of cat eye glasses with a very clean across the bra like bangs and pulled back into a ponytail. Yeah. And she just looks cool. Why did she put her foot up on the desk when. Yeah, I don't know. During her reprimand? Yes. I think it was to show defiance. Oh. Yeah. It was to show defiance, in my opinion. I'll have yeah. to remember that. In my Next opinion, time I yeah. need to show defiance. <laughs> yeah. When, when like, there's a I'm board of put men. My foot up next time. <laughs> there's a board of men st- staring at you, Joel. It. I've seen that board of men reprimanding somebody in like uh, Korean and Chinese cinema many times, which is. That yeah. must be a real thing. Yeah. What? Like five, Having, like, five people, that are, people like, that are like, oh. like the detective has to report to. Why haven't you finished the, this case yet, or something like that? And there's five guys behind the table, and he's like, "We're making their way," you know, blah blah blah. You're mm-hmm. not the governor. He wants to know what's going on. Then you put, stuff. then you put your stinky foot up on the desk, and you're like, "Your stinky mm-hmm. foot." <laughs> I guess it's like in America when you have to, I guess, Yangu. report to someone. It's just like one person. Yeah. But I think in a lot of Asian people, I know said it's always like everyone's involved. Council. They get everyone yeah. gathered and be like, it's we want to hear what you have to say. The panel is ready. Yeah. But then again, I'm not really in a desk job, so I don't know if they actually do that they in real life be. here either. <laughs> so I don't know. No. No. Well, okay. No? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. X-Files though, right? Whenever Mulder and Scully were in trouble, they had to talk to several people, right? Well, That's the Skinner. FBI. Well, was it just Skinner? Yeah, Because usually. I remember there being like, I remember there being like- Skinner and smoking guy in the background <laughs> sometimes, but you Usually it was just Skinner okay. making that face. You guys right. can't do that anymore. And then when they were really in trouble, then, <laughs> then there were a couple of people. That's what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> it wasn't five people, I'm sure, but it must have been at least two to three people. They needed a big, fat, people. fat, balding guy at the table <laughs> so that she could have done something. It could have been like, oh! <laughs> and then the sweat rolling down his head. <laughs> Skinner was pretty awesome. How dare you? Skinner. I'm really. I mean, I know you guys haven't seen him. Spoilers. He spoilers. He does. He does uh, oh, return. Is he buff? Sweet. No, he looks pretty much the same, nice. which is kind of. No, he looks it's the same. The same. Does he take his shirt off? Like it's really kind of scary. Like no time has passed. Skinner, That's I love weird. You. He's what? an immortal. Yeah. Uh, so That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, nothing I like about Kitty Honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's it's right. Whenever she transforms, Kitty just everyone's reaction just around her, not even in her hero form, because she does. I don't know. It's like she's very almost childish. Like some, there's a scene where she's running through the streets wearing a trash bag. Oh yeah, that was awesome. And just seeing <laughs> someone trip. like. Doo! You know, and like throwing up all the mail in his hand. Like crashes his bicycle. (laughs) Nobody's noticed that. (laughs) Just very cartoonish. There's one where her butt, like, kind of crashes into someone's car, (gasps) and then she just leans over, like, "I'm sorry," and he just has a. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) During the finale, that was uh, the creator. It was Judy Honey. That's what it said in the trivia. Oh, Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, he's she jazzed. was really excited. Oh, I know that butt anyway. <laughs> I drew it. <laughs> Let's repeat that scene again. Oh. Just to make sure we got it right. <laughs> That's like straight out of anime. That yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> but on the windshield. Uh, I just like how fat. That's, that's another thing. Is like she'll be, <laughs> she'll be like her reaction to things. Like someone be like, I'm going to arrest you. She's like, bye. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't just, have time. <laughs> bye. But it's yeah, when that cop shows up at her office, she's like, hey, it's you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Where are you going? Like, I'm or girl. she'll be eating something and she'll be like, I'm sick. And then we're like, she'll just, like, can you drink alcohol? She's like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm just drinking all this beer. And then they're like, can she even handle that? And then she just starts crying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really loud. That was another, that was a funny good scene because they all get all drunk and then they're doing karaoke. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's kind of, a, I mean, that I, I do feel like that was a spoiler for that, but you should like see that scene because it's, it's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Fun yeah. stuff. And they're all gone at it. Yeah. That sounds wrong. <sighs> you know what I meant. <laughs> She seemed really shocked when Cutie Honey uh, drank both cups of coffee. Like, oh my gosh, two cups of coffee? Like, 
Yeah. Well, she nailed them. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's just what we do. <laughs> yeah. Like, in that direction, she downs the two cups of coffee, and Kitty Honey looks at her and goes, like, I did it! <laughs> <laughs> It's astounding to drink two cups of coffee. Well, maybe they're really hot, so she's like, whoa. Oh, <laughs> maybe, yeah. She just downed two, like, there were shots. <laughs> <laughs> Scalding hot coffee. Bouncing off the wall. Camping. <laughs> Who knows what's going on. Yeah. I liked all the sub-bosses' designs. I liked Gold Puma in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and I liked... Uh, the, my least favorite actually was... Uh, <laughs> What was she? Crimson? Oh. Yeah. And it's only because she didn't really get to do much other than firing that thing, and then she was yeah. eliminated. I like how... She was a one-trick pony. In the fight, when there's an explosion, her hair turned into an afro. <laughs> <laughs> After she gets blown. <laughs> she gets blown. That should happen whenever there were explosions. People would be like, ah. Oh. And it's not like, <laughs> the oh, like I'm going to fight harder. It's like... Um, like, you haven't seen the last of me? I'm just yeah. gonna run away with an afro. And they're all surprised when they get hurt. Like, somebody hurt me? Oh, crap. <laughs> That's, you know, I noticed that in the Kid Show, too. Like, they're like, this is, can't be happening. There's no, no way this could this ever happen. <laughs> this isn't even my final form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Mm. The, the big boss, like, that mm. character in this movie totally reminded me of, like, when you see, like, a really fancy Barbie doll, and it's, like, in one of those stands, and it can't move. It's just, like, in a gown, and it's there just it standing is. right there in the stand. That's funny. <laughs> Stationary. Yeah. Bad guy. I've seen pictures of that butler, like, the anime version of that butler before. Like, just it's out of context. <laughs> I'd seen pictures of the black and white guy before. Oh, like that's the, interesting. Yeah. Really? I don't know where, but I had seen that character before. Hmm. I think after this, I'm going to, like, seriously get, like, research more. Yeah, dig in. That's cool. I'm and then know. just come over and bother you guys about it. And you're Same like, no, that's cool. <laughs> you're like, the podcast is over. No. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. We had to buy this DVD because it was this, this movie is not available anywhere. I found a copy of it on the internet that, uh, it's, it's funny, like, I was watching it and started off with the bathtub scene, and I was like, oh, this op this can't be the start of the movie, you know, it must be a skip forward, but apparently that was the start of the movie. <laughs> but the site was super sketchy, so I was like, okay, I'm uh, just gonna have to buy it. But if somebody else did want to see this movie, you can get the DVD on Amazon for, like, $5. It, like, it says... Forty dollars, and then the price cut is for five dollars. So it's really affordable, and if you're just interested, you know, just throw five dollars that way. Donate it to your local library afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get it out there. Nobody seems to have it. It's definitely worth watch. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, it does have a very simple premise. It's not complicated at all. Huh. Clothes rip off. She fights, <laughs> and it's funny. And it's oh yeah, it's silly. Super and, fun. Yeah, it it needs to be seen for the style. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the style. There's of it. the style alone. Like even the first five minutes of this movie is just amazing. Uh, seeing the henchmen fly through the air. Uh, the <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a great scene of where they're getting kicked left and right, and you just see them fly, like, being flung up I to the heavens. I, yeah. I was almost waiting for that little ding. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that, that just, that just really, I don't know, all, all my sensibilities were just all about that. Like, it's just so much fun. Yeah. They're really creative with the parts of, like, when she has to flip into the air and she's doing moves that would be too fast for any actor to do, like they transition into an animated form of her and sometimes you see her face. And, that's so and much it looks really good. Oh, it's not so much animated. I, they took actual photographs of her in the air and Just then speed it up. and sped it up, which I thought. Yeah. So it's like they took frame by frame of the pictures of her. And then we were talking oh about that. It's like the it's like an effect that you do not see used, but yeah. it was totally cool <laughs> because you could see like all the different like poses of her in the yeah. air. Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of animated interesting. Yeah. Mm hmm so, Felt very manga. Yeah. It's yeah, awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I have to say. I can't think of anything else. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for it was fun. This. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Can't wait to see what you present next. Time. Oh, I have something <laughs> lined up, and it's going to be deliciously evil. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So the movie for next week is 
What is it? We have The Bishop's Wife from 1947. That was selected for us by The Randomizer. Uh, Sarah and I have seen that movie before. We watched it a couple Christmases ago. Huh. It's, it's something that Sarah likes a lot. Cool. Cool. I've never seen that before, so that'll be pretty fun to watch. Very good. Cool. I hope you like Cary Grant, because he's naked in it. No, he's not. All right. I can't uh, wait to see his transformation scene. <laughs> what? Okay, he's not. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I disappointed everybody by saying he was naked. So, the... Uh, <laughs> Email address for the website uh, at uh, please don't podcast at gmail.com. Twitter <laughs> at Outer Space Pod. Facebook page, come uh, seek us out. Give us a like. If you listen to us on iTunes, subscribe, please. Leave us a rating. We would really appreciate that. Five star. Five whole stars. I don't know if we deserve five oh, stars. Oh, we do. I mean, did you hear how, how bad I treated Kroll? I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm a terrible do person. To Just breathe, Joel. Anything? It'll be fine. Do you have, like any of your art or anything? Oh, yeah. Do you want to plug anything? Oh, I don't know. Still working on this. So, no, no worries. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I'm an artist, too, and I have a page on Facebook, Sarah Roberts Designs. Um, and these guys are artists, too. <laughs> me? Yeah. I feel like they're way more established than me, too. Nah, I, I gotta get my act together. <laughs> no, yeah. I do. Yeah, I'm lucky to have together. so many creative friends. Aw, <laughs> sweet. Yeah. I'm only, I only perform in flash mobs, so you can't really see my stuff on the internet. You flash people? Performance yes, that art. kind of flash mob. Oh. Joel is definitely a performer. I find, I find a mob of people and I flash them. <laughs> Sounds about right. My teeth. Whoa. Yeah. So we gotta end this the way we always end this, so I hope you guys were thinking about a lesson that you've learned from this movie. So who wants to go first? What lesson can we take away from Cutie Honey Live Action from two thousand four? That um you should be more focused on the people you love and not think about what you lost, but think about the time that you had with the people that you love. Mm, excellent. Mm -hmm. That's a real lesson. It is. It's not the garbage Aaron usually gives. <laughs> oh, oh, spotlight. 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 Harsh. I'm joking. Harsh. Yeah, Aaron. Clean, what's guess, what's your clean lesson? <laughs> <laughs> um, Everything I give is gold. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> my lesson. Aaron doesn't learn anything. Oh. <laughs> Just repetitively does things over and over. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Um... <laughs> Uh yeah, yeah, I don't have a lesson. Too yeah. much, too much. Yep, too much pressure. Yep, that's okay. It was fun though. I'll let you off the hook <laughs> this time. I mean, isn't isn't your lesson that pay attention that <laughs> even ladies can look really good with mustaches and business suits? That, how'd you know, Joel? That was exactly uh, what I was thinking. Uh, I know what you like. <laughs> Stop razzing them, business ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, do you have something? A lesson from the movie Cutie Honey. Buy furniture, because your house looks really sparse without it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we actually see her house? Or are you that was about it. His house? That was her house. house to, oh, yeah. yeah. She like living in a mansion. It must be her there was, place, it, wasn't, it wasn't like furnished at all. And there was one kitty cat. And where was the cat? It's just hanging out, out in the hallway. Yeah. It has this Set. litter and a little lamp for no, it. Lamp and litter. Mm. Mm. Litter lamp. It didn't look impressed at all. No, it Life. did not look very... <laughs> That cat looked like it had seen some fights. <laughs> it was like Tiger, but if Tiger was out on the streets. Aww. <laughs> Tough Tiger. Yeah. And the lesson I learned is that if your power relies on you having the energy to be able to do it, then you should probably always make sure your fridge is stocked. Just in case somebody kidnaps your uncle. Yep. Why not your pockets? Because you can't take your fridge with you. Yeah. Maybe. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I like how she's, she's not always at home. <laughs> no, I like to self-invent portable fridge that fits on back. You mean a cooler? Ah, somebody <laughs> took my idea. <laughs> I, I like the fact that she kept stuffing her trash into her trash bag costume yeah. <laughs> <laughs> while she was running. That opening scene is so good. Yeah, yeah. The whole movie's good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, Nail. Bye. Bye.